these lures, then I ran one of them over with a lawnmower. The second lure met an equally swift end when I lost it literally on the first cast. I'm going to make a couple more of these lures, but this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful with them. In my first video making these stick baits, I used twist eyes for my hardware. I'm kind of skipping over all of that and condensing the video this time, so if you want to see that process in more detail, you can check that video out. Twist eyes are very strong, but if you're potentially going to catch a big saltwater fish, you might want to opt for a through wire. And the reason for this is that with wooden lures, there's potential for there to be a weakness in the grain, and the lure could split. While I think the chances of this happening are pretty small, you can remove all doubt by using a through wire. Also, I wanted to show you something a little different from the original video. We're ready to get started on making the through wire for this lure. And to do that, I'm going to be using this 0 0.062 inch diameter stainless steel lock wire uh, linked in the description below. And uh, I'm also going to be using these double barrel crimps. And I don't know what size these are. I, I basically, I bought a variety pack of sizes and so I've just kind of work out of that, but I've picked out some of the bigger ones here. I'm going to use those. First thing to do is to get a piece of wire here, maybe about 10 inches or so. 
something like that. And I'll work with it and get it straight. As straight as I can. Uh, that's pretty, pretty good. They make some wire straightening uh, tools, but I don't, I don't really have one. I just work with it until I get it pretty straight. We're going to have three loops. We're going to have a loop here on the nose, a loop on the tail, and a loop in the belly. But we need to start with the loop in the belly. So I'm going to take this wire. I'm going to bend it in half. And I'm going to use my little, uh, little wire bending pliers here. And I'm just going to work a loop into that. crimps on there. I want that belly hook to be right here on this particular lure. I'm trying to get it kind of far away from the tail hook so they don't get tangled up um, and all that. Let's kind of use this as a depth gauge. Okay, so that's the depth, but we also want to go a full loop depth on top of that. So, if we bend like a quarter of an inch above our crimp here, we should be right in the zone we want to be in. We're going to bend that both sides at a 90 degree. So we can test fit that. I do a lot of test fitting when I'm doing wire bending. Yeah, that's going to be about right. It could stand to be a little bit deeper, but I'm not going to fuss over it too much. That little bit of sleeve that's sticking out, I think I can get buried in epoxy and stuff like that so you won't even see it. Or I could just slide my crimp down a bit. There we go. How about that? I haven't really, I haven't really crimped it. Before I bend my loop, I need to put a crimp sleeve on there. Once I've manipulated that enough, I'm going to do another test fit. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the front. Put our sleeve on first, that's very important. Actually going to crimp these. Uh, I don't really have the tool or anything like I'm supposed to for this. Um, so what I use is just a flathead screwdriver, and then I give it a good tap with a hammer until it doesn't slide around anymore. Now to a degree, I don't know how much that matters. I like to have it locked down pretty good, but then once we embed this, we're going to embed it with some epoxy and stuff, and that's going to help hold it in place as well. Uh, so it's going to be very, very secure when we're all said and done. But I do like to give it a little, a uh, little tap with the with the hammer just to make sure that that's cinched down pretty good. I want to lock this into place. Use some of this baking soda and Instacure. Put a little dab in there. Tap it. Same deal at the front. Now, sometimes the middle doesn't need to be anchored in this. In this particular case, it does not. It's it's sitting nicely, um, but sometimes it's kind of bowed up, and you need to shove it down and lock it into place. 
uh, in which case you'd do that for that for that spot as well but like I said this one's this one's staying put right where I want it so I'm not gonna mess with it on this one that's pretty much uh, the only difference between doing a through wire like this and the twist eyes that I did last time uh, other than that the process is pretty much the same I use a hot glue gun and some pre-made lead weights uh, in the diameters of the, the bits that I've got and so I've got these stacked on there. I want this one to be a pretty fast sinking stick bait. Um, and so that's pretty fast. If we look at it again, it's, it's uh, fairly level as well. decided not to foil this one. I'm going to do a clownfish pattern uh, on this particular lure and so I'm just going to do a straight paint job on it. And to get started I'm going to use some automotive primer. Uh, now there's another kind that has a, a higher build to it that I really prefer but I'm out of that so I'm just going to use this. I'm going to put a coat on it or two and then I can sand it and get it really really smooth. So um, I like to use primer for that because it's kind of easy to see where the imperfections are. But I'm going to start my fan up and open the door up so you're going to hear that noise but I uh, just need to get some ventilation in here. So I did a pretty good job of sanding it the first time but there's a couple little areas here. I'll see if I can show you that I've got a little bit of rough on them. There's a few here along the belly area. I'm going to sand those down again with fine sandpaper and just try and get those ironed out real good before I start putting my colors on. Now that I've got that uh, sufficiently smooth, I'm going to put my first color on there, which is going to be opaque white as my base. I'm going to take some masking tape and we're going to split it down the middle. What we want is kind of a rough, uneven edge. We're going to tape off three white stripes here. You want your tears to wind up being on the outside, okay? So there's one stripe. I'm going to do another one here and another one on the face. That's kind of what we're going for on that. Just going to mask off three stripes and those will wind up being white when we're all done. I'm ready to put the orange on and uh, you can use any kind of orange you want. I'm going to use this iridescent scarlet. Um, I really like it. I think it gives it kind of a nice, nice look, but you could use a fluorescent. You could use really any color. Uh, if you wanted to do something a little less traditional. So to my eye, and it may not come off like this on the camera, but to my eye this looks a little bit pale. So. I'm going to brighten it up a little bit with some Wicked Fluorescent Sunburst. And I may wind up going back over it with the um, Iridescent Scarlet again, but I think I need to just brighten it up. It seems too dull and too, you know, drab. Yeah. I feel like I lost a little bit too much. 
much of my sheen. Uh, so I want to try and get that back. So I may just mist back over it with the um, iridescent scarlet one more time. Just to get that pearl shine back on it. Alright, so I may have done a little bit more than just the misting, but it gives it that shine, and I think we're getting into some real subtle uh, paint things here. I mean, just a bright orange would be fine, but I really like that shine, and I think it gives it something. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I put the two layers of orange on there because uh, I think they complement each other really well. Okay, I'm going to give this uh, lure just a little bit more dimension. So what I'm going to do is put a fine mist of pearl white uh, along the belly here. Okay, so sometimes when you're doing these things, you get a little bit unexpected results, and I'm getting the dimension I want, but it feels kind of pale again. So I'm going to try and brighten it up. I'm going to use a little bit more of this uh, Wicked Fluorescent Sunburst just to brighten that up just a, a skosh. Of a subtle detail, but it's there. Okay. Our last little detail here is to go over the edges of the tape with opaque black. Now, the secret to this is to spray onto the edge of the tape and let it overspray slightly onto the orange. I've got my foil on there, and I've I've wiped it down with some uh, alcohol. Um, I'm going to paint this lure in a Pacific mackerel pattern. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of this iridescent turquoise along the back. Same thing along the belly, but with opaque white. Now I've got both of these lures. 
numbers to a point where I'm ready to put a clear coat on them. And so I'm not going to really talk in great detail about uh, my setup and how I do that. Um, I've got other videos that do a better job of that, but just kind of real quick, I'm going to be using this uh, True Coat two part um, epoxy and I'm going to mix it up. And once these have cured, then we'll put another coat of paint on everything. got this off of the wheel and it's all cured and ready to go. Um, now it's time to put kind of a subtle scale pattern on it. Um, and so I'm going to use some of this uh, plastic mesh that I've got. And then I'm going to put a little bit of pearl silver on there. off. Okay, y'all know I do not like um, having scale on my gills, so I'm going to take a Q-tip, I'm going to wet it, and then I can just kind of scrub off the scale pattern right there. Where I don't want it. Pretty much done painting, uh, so I'm ready to put the eyes on. Um, I finally quit messing around and I got the extra thick Instacure, and um, that will be very helpful for putting eyes on. Uh, and then for the eyes, I've had to find a alternate source here. These are Fish Skull Living Eyes, the Fire model. My, my normal uh, eyes that I like to use are unavailable, so um, we're going to try these out. I think something orange would look really good here. I think those will look, I think those will look great. So, even though these are self-adhesive eyes, I like to put a little super glue on there because I don't want them sliding around once I've put the clear coat on. That is extremely aggravating, uh, to have that happen to you. So, let's put a dab of extra thick on there. Oh yeah, I like that. That's not going to run everywhere and make a mess. That's nice. The dark towards the front. Yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, we've pulled this one off the drying wheel as well and it's looking really nice. Um, what I need to do next is cover the seams here. You can see the foil below the, uh, the clear coat there. Um, I really hate seeing that, so I'm going to cover it up. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to paint really thinly over that with opaque white. And um, just like I've done here, you can see how well that that covers that seam. There's, there, you can't see anything. It really hides it. So I'm going to do the same thing, opaque white, really thin right here. And then I'm going to go over that with the iridescent turquoise. And the reason I don't just do iridescent turquoise is uh, I'd have to put too many layers on there. And it's faster really just to put a little bit of opaque white on top of that and then paint it. Uh, it saves you some time in the end.
had a perfectly covered foil seam there. And then in a similar way on the bottom, I'm going to put um, a little bit of pearl white on there. Uh, it just looks a little bit nicer, I think. Personal preference. Whenever I paint over clear coat like this, now I've got this exposed acrylic paint. And so if I get any water on it or anything like that, it really messes it up. But I still want to put some more detail over this. And I also want to put my, my uh, decal and my signature on there. And the decal especially, uh, since it's a water slide decal, can really mess with that finish. So something I've been doing here is putting some of this uh, Kmar varnish over it uh, at this stage and then doing the next layer of work. That way all my, all my water uh, that I'm using on this uh, won't affect it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a layer, uh, I'm going to put actually three thin layers of this over my lure at this stage. And then um, I can come back and do some detail over it. I can put my decals. I can do all that stuff without really risking messing up this paint that I just put on. With the stripes on, there's one more detail I want to add, and that is I want to put a little bit of pearl satin gold kind of down the midline here where it kind of slightly obscures some of the black. Just slightly, just slightly. It's kind of a subtle detail. When the light hits it, you can see that gold a bit. And then I'm going to kind of roll that over the top, but much more lightly. Basically what I'm trying to do is just tie that gold in where you see it over the whole top, uh, but more so on the side. So the eyes on this one, I'm going to use that same brand, the Fish Skull. We're going to try those out and we're going to use the ice. So I guess by pure accident, we're using fire and ice here. But uh, I gotta tell you, I'm really digging this um, extra thick super glue. Really makes a great difference in putting these eyes on. Just gonna put a glob. Put the little point forward.
slow to moderate retrieve. Swims nice with a split ring on it. Nice swimming action. I hope y'all can see that. Check this out. I got rid of the swivel and just reel it real fast. And it does really good through through the water at speed. I'm trying to burn it to heck. I'm gonna try fishing it this way for a little while. See if I like that better. Let's do some like twitches and jerks and see what it's. Not sure flashes around a lot. I don't know. We'll try it. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.